My name is Dr. Margaret Bach. I'm one of the pediatric nephrologists at Children's Hospital Colorado. I'm here today with Dr. Vijay Vimulakanda, one of the urologists at Children's, and we're here today to discuss our CACIT program. Vijay, what is CACIT and what does our program entail? So CACIT is an acronym that stands for Congenital Anomalies of the Kidney and Urinary Tract, and the program really is a home and a clinic for patients that are diagnosed with complex congenital kidney or urologic anomalies. Um, we developed this program as an extension of our original posterior urethral valve program that was started in 2012, and about five years ago, we recognized the fact that the number of patients that we were seeing with nephrology or that we thought could benefit from having uh, nephrology uh, support really was growing and outgrowing the space that we had in that clinic. Um, and so we decided to develop a formal program for these kids with CACIT where they could be seen by a multidisciplinary team. Uh, that team includes both a nephrologist and a urologist, as well as advanced practice providers from both urology and nephrology, uh, a nurse from both nephrology and a nurse from urology, a dietitian, a psychologist, as well as access to transplant um, members, both the coordinators as well as the surgeons as needed for kids that we either think might need a transplant in the future or might have already had a transplant and need ongoing evaluation evaluation and management. So it sounds to me um, like the CACUT team is um, very comprehensive and um, one of the things that makes me excited about this program is that we um, believe in providing care from early, early on in a child's life to um, all the way through to adolescence and young adulthood. Can you talk a little bit how that has developed for us and when do we first meet these patients? Yeah, well, as you know, Margaret, um, you know, since we developed the Colorado Fetal Care Center about five years ago, one thing that we have noticed is we're really a regional catchment center for children with complex urologic and um, nephrologic problems, and that includes the spectrum from posterior urethral valves to bilateral hydronephrosis, as well as more rare diseases such as um, renal agenesis or polycystic kidney disease associated with lack of um, amniotic fluid. So you're saying this includes anybody with um, maybe just a urologic um, anomaly or a difference in the way a kidney is formed to somebody who might have chronic kidney disease or be on dialysis, is that right? Absolutely. This is really a program designed for kids that we think might be at risk for um, loss of renal reserve or ongoing renal problems. So that could be the child that has bilateral vesicourethral reflux or bilateral um, kidney obstruction to the kid that we know has a high risk of needing transplantation or dialysis with a lower um, urologic anomaly such as bladder outlet obstruction, bladder extrophy, to these more rare conditions that present prenatally or early in the postnatal period with essentially anuria and then need to be managed in anticipation of a transplant with all of the associated um, bladder care that that might require for long-term success. And, you know, one of the things that I like to think about with our program is that um, many of these kids that we get to know very early in their life, sometimes even prenatally, um, it's the same team that continues to follow them over years um, and sees them through sort of the periods of life that are big and changing, whether that be perinatally or during potty training or without whatever urologic interventions need to happen, and then we see them on through college and or work or whatever it might be out into the world, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, and I think that's really nice. We also have, we have continuity with the fetal team, which includes the two of us, as well as a representative from the transplant team. Um, dialysis nursing is part of that, as well as the same psychologist that's in our, in our CACA clinic. And it also includes members of the transplant team. So you're you know, obviously the, ch the uh, medical director of transplant here at Children's, and our APP Brian Miller is also a part of that transplant evaluation team. So it provides a nice home that we see the same kids that we think might be at risk of transplant and are hopefully able to prolong their health of their kidneys to, to defer the need for transplant. We do pre-transplant evaluations in our clinic, and once the decision for transplant has been made, we offer a home to make sure that that transplant is as healthy and that their sort of overall health is as good as possible for as long as possible. So we see kids into their adolescence, and we actually have a few kids that come back to see us when they're home for summer break or uh, winter break from college still. So it provides a pretty nice um, 
sort of uh, integrated program that is almost like a medical home for these complicated kids. And Vijay, can you tell us a little bit more about, um, we, we've we learned already a lot about the people who are part of the, CAC, the CACET program. Um, what else um, can we offer um, within the clinic? Um, is it a space that offers other things in yeah. addition? It's really a one-stop shop for these patients. So we actually offer ultrasound within our clinic. We offer urodynamics, which are complicated bladder sort of assessment tests for those kids that we think are at risk of lower urinary tract problems. We offer ambulatory blood pressure monitoring. Um, and really, except for lab work, everything else is housed within our clinic space. And hopefully, as we continue to grow, we might build off for lab draws, too, in the future. Sure. Um, one thing I want to mention that you hadn't talked about yet is even though the team at Children's is a fairly well-defined team, I think an important partnership is really our partnership with a primary care provider for these kids. As you know, we cover about a seven-state catchment area, and that's even bigger if you include the kids that come or the parents that come in for prenatal evaluation. And because of that, that distance and that ability not to be sort of right at the front lines, the primary care provider really is an integral member of our team. And they help us with things both in terms of triage of kids come in sick or have a UTI or they're worried about um, sort of growth and development uh, as well as an extender for our clinic so if families are coming from far away oftentimes they can get their ultrasounds and labs done locally we can review them and offer advice without requiring the family to come see us every three months or six months so in that way it really helps us provide a nice network and a really good uh, partnership to sort of make this as convenient and ex as as accessible as possible to our family members. Yeah, I would even say that for for us, especially in the world of transplant as well, the primary care providers are another part of our multidisciplinary team. It's just another extension of it and all the things that they have locally, um, which I think enhance the care for these kids who typically have very complex medical histories and medical and, and urologic systems. So, um, which brings me to my next question. If I'm a primary care provider, when should I refer and how do I do that? Um, is there too soon or what is the right time? I think if you're at all concerned that a, a kid has a kidney problem um, that's associated with a structural problem, that patient should be referred to our clinic. We really focus on kids that have um, either a functional solitary kidney or bilateral kidney injury. So this isn't really the best place for the kid that presents with isolated mild dilation on one side. But the kids with bilateral high-grade reflux, kids with bilateral moderate to severe hydronephrosis, or any kid that's at risk of having a bladder abnormality, again, posterior valves, um, prune belly syndrome, extrophy, or those kids that presented prenatally with um, loss of uh, amniotic fluid, either oligo or anhydramnios, are really the kids that we're looking for. We want this to be a home that if you think a kid is at risk for ki kidney disease being um, being present or progressing, this is a place where we can really try to help intervene as soon as possible. And the best way to uh, basically refer to the clinic is to call our urology clinic. We schedule all of the appointments through CACIT or the nephrology clinic, if there's, especially if there's an existing uh, relationship. Um, and as you know, you and I basically look in, at every patient that comes in and determines what they need before they are actually seen, but it's very rare that we would turn somebody away if we think that there's a concern about this. So we would recommend and people come and call us as soon as possible or reach out to us via um, Tiger text or email if there's any questions that we could answer. And so why do you, so over the last several years since we've um, begun working as a multidisciplinary team, um, our patient population has really grown um, a lot. Um, do you have a feeling as to why we suddenly have all these kids that are we have identified um, to fall into this K-cut spectrum? Um, and then um, maybe we can talk a little bit as well as to how we're sort of trying to build our program um, to also expand to other parts of our institution at Children's. Yeah, so I think that there's a, a couple reasons why our program is growing. One, as we talked about, with the thriving fetal program, our large catchment area, I think we're seeing more of these kids. And especially kids that would be diagnosed with something that was pre previously considered lethal, there's more and more 
innovative care that can be offered to them to keep them alive in the neonatal period. And that provides a whole host of challenges, but also provides a new, you know, very exciting population to try to support. The other thing is I think that people are more aware of the sort of nexus between even what seems like fairly common neurologic disease and underlying um, renal um, functional loss, and vice versa. The kids that have underlying renal anomalies um, oftentimes have an associated structural component. So whether it's the kid with bilateral polycystic kidney disease, or the agenesis kid, or even the kid that has sort of um, nephrotic syndrome or other issues that are of unknown etiology, I think there's a surprising number of those kids that may have some inherent bladder anomalies that, or bladder problems that may be of um, importance to address prior to transplantation. And one of the things that we're trying to do is really expand our reach with this clinic um, as our network of care continues to grow. So we actually are developing a very similar CACA clinic with you and my colleague Brian Caldwell down in Colorado Springs, and we're hoping that as we continue to expand our network of care, we can offer more outreach um, for this combined program across our sort of other uh, regional and satellite clinics that we have. And so how about the outcomes? So it seems like this would be a good thing. Um, not only is it a one-stop shop, but what do we know um, about how children do if they're followed long-term by a multidisciplinary team? Especially, and you know, my feeling is in, especially through transplant, um, which is a huge changing step in somebody's life. Um, you probably know the, da the data as well as I do, but I know for specific populations, both posterior urethral valves and vesicourethral reflux, there have been studies that suggest that early integrated care actually can help prolong kidney health and um, at least um, push back the need for transplant, even if it doesn't get rid of that need altogether. Specifically, in the posterior urethral valve population, there's been quite a bit of literature looking at how bladder outcomes and bladder management can actually impact long-term kidney outcomes. And I think that this is an area that continues to be ripe for um, research and evaluation. We currently have an ongoing data registry of all of our patients with CACA conditions, and we're basically following them from the minute they first see us through transplant and beyond. Um, we're also hopefully hoping to leverage existing research within this space um, so that we can actually expand that, that reach as well. Um, I currently have a uh, a grant funded by the uh, Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality that has a multi-center um, urologic research network and we're evaluating conditions including isolated um, hydronephrosis diagnosed prenatally as well as vesicourethral reflux um, and hopefully we can utilize that existing infrastructure to also look at variations in care across the country for kids that have similar um, conditions that might be more rare such as posterior urethral valves, renal agenesis, um, or X and so we're really excited by the fact that we have this ongoing sort of structure to our clinic that really is allowing us to be very deliberative um, and uh, critical of what our outcomes are to look for possibilities for improvement. The other thing that we've done is again pair with the fetal care center where we have an ongoing data registry looking at prenatally diagnosed anomalies and now utilizing our electronic health record we're actually able to link those prenatal images and findings to our postnatal outcomes which provides another huge resource for our families as we're getting more information and can look for things such as novel biomarkers that might be predictive of who's actually going to go on to transplant and who might have some uh, preventable risk factors that we can actually intervene for. And which will be so exciting over time because you're collecting, we are collecting this information now and I can just imagine the next five to ten years what that may be able to tell us about our patient, patient population and how we may be able to refine our care um, in this multidisciplinary space. And I really think of this as almost a holistic clinic. You know, there are definitely places across the country where you have urologists and nephrologists see patients either together or sort of virtually, but by having really developed this team that includes looking at nutrition and sort of growth parameters as well as psychosocial and developmental parameters allowing families to meet the transplant team early to understand better about what transplant means and how why it is so important to adhere to some of the things that we ask kids and especially teenagers to do that are quite difficult I think that provides families with a more complete picture of what's going on with their children um, and hopefully um, a better sense of some of the kind of um, subtle changes that we might see along the way that we can use as um, 
uh, identifiers for who we need to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of intervening for and not. And at least anecdotally, I think we've actually seen that kids that look like their creatinine is normal, but when you dig a little deeper, their growth curve seems like it's not quite as stable as it used to be, or their cystatin C level is a little bit lower than we would, or higher than we would expect. Um, and all of those things together, I think, allows us to really paint a more complete picture and um, helps us to continue to refine our reasons for urologic intervention or nephrologic and dietary interventions as well. And so as we're wrapping up, um, you know, like you mentioned, we have a very large catchment area. Um, what kind of support can we offer um, for families who are coming from far? So one of the great things that I enjoy about our clinic as well is that we have social workers and family navigators. Can you talk to that a little bit about how we can help families who are coming from afar? Yeah, I think that you know reaching out to our clinic again is very important. We have both our social workers and our administrative team and our nurses that really can help to provide things such as you know transportation, um, uh, support, vouchers for meals. Our nurses are oftentimes actively involved with developing individualized education plans for these kids who might need to catheterize or need other special things in school. Um, and I think that that coupled with we also have family support and patient support level groups, what we call our surge group for kids that are have complex surgical conditions, um, urologic conditions and may need surgical intervention. All of those things together, I think, help to provide additional support for our families. And I think it's just a matter of, you know, as people are referred to us, us understanding what those potential barriers might be so we can utilize our team to address them. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thanks so much for having me. It's always exciting to be able to discuss this program because I feel like it's really just something that you and I are both passionate about and we can really see the demonstrable differences that we're making in these kids' lives. So thank you for this opportunity. If um, anybody would like some additional information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Go ahead and um, call either the Department of Urology or Nephrology at Children's.